Hi everyone, this is Rajiv from Smart AI Technologies. Today we will see how crop yield prediction is depending upon the pesticides that we use. What type of pesticides and what is the main content of that pesticide and what is its effect on our crop yield. So, before moving there, first we will check our data set. How is our data set and what are its parameters and what are the parameters that we are going to use in our code as an input and as an output so it will be entirely coding stuff there will be no uh, much theory so it's better if you open any jupyter notebook and uh, you work on uh, work with uh, like uh, with me okay uh, you use this code uh, continuously and uh, try to uh, debug it if you get any error check in the code okay otherwise ju just message us to the given number below you can whatsapp there okay if you get any error or if you need any support as a first part, I am going to import my data set which says Karnataka complete data set pesticides info. It means I have a data set of about Karnataka. Actually, I have uh, for all India data set. Here, I am going to first use Karnataka data set. So, I am importing that using pandas. Then you can see I am displaying some data. I have state, district, year, season, crop, area, heat, temperature, humidity, pressure, pesticide used okay our concentration should be on these things what is a pesticide here pesticide is given in numbers why because if we give names it may it may like uh, it is not good okay so uh, to do that i am just giving you a numbers for pesticides one two three four five and pesticide type what is its type there are five types of pesticides in which class this pesticide belongs to whether it's a oocide desiccant this type is based on how it works and after that what is the highest uh, chemical uh, component of that uh, pesticide uh, whether it is chloridane, adrenaline, it will be having so many chemical components but which is highest level that is given there and after that uh, new column new column is there sorry uh, one unwanted column is there that is unnamed geo so I am going to remove that first and I am going to check my data set information here i will be getting what are the columns are there state district and like that and i will be getting what type data type what is their data type whether it's object int or uh, float this i need to know because in the end all my columns should be numerical so no column should be object we need to do something to solve this problem to do that i am going to check here you can see here float or two float like a Columns which are float are 2, int, int 64 or 5, object are 6. So, after that, I am going to check for my data set columns. So, what are the columns are there? State, district, year, season, crop. And after that, I am going to see what are the null values are there. Like which column is having how many null values. In that, we are going to get like yield column is having nearly 43 empty values. That is null values. you can see i am getting a mean value of area what is the mean value mean area it means 83 or 840 hectares of land that is grown for each uh, like normally that is a cultivated land then i am going to display some df dot head like head values of it and after that i am going to display the data frame now i am going to check it graphically the relation between my x value will be pesticide used what type of pesticide is and how it is getting affected on my yield and for which crop it is getting affected positively or negatively and in which season so this single graph will show us all this information that you can see here here we will be getting to see pesticide 5 is giving better yield and also this uh, sky blue dark sky blue comes here brinjal arcanet or like that color okay and safe is plus plus nothing but whole here if that crop is grown whole year uh, that pesticide used fifth pesticide is giving us the better result whereas one two three four five one two three four are not uh, giving uh, like the yield that when we use these pesticides uh, the yield is not good at all okay fifth pesticide is working better now 
what type of pesticide is good and what type of pesticide is bad to do that when i uh, plot the graph you can see here ov sides is giving better yield than all other okay and it also in most sky blue it means it comes under grapes a uh, brinjal citrus fruit is there okay dark sky blue now you can see it with the weather with the humidity what will be our yield okay when humidity is under 40 uh, it is better if it's more than 40 it's uh, where we are not getting any good results same you can see with the pressure 1011 here we are getting the better yield and season whole year if someone grows the crop whole year always you will get the better yield and then i am uh, plotting some a few more graphs there what is that area handle temperature and yield humidity and yield season and yield the same thing which i drawn above i and i am plotting it again okay but together which will uh, make us uh, to analyze very easily here i am district and the season okay district and season wise i am plotting and after that we can see here uh, temperature and yield but selected data okay that's why you can see small graphs here and after that mathematically i need to know what will be the effect of my values on my target target is my yield my values my concentrated values are pesticides used so for that i am going to plot correlation matrix you can see once i uh, display correlation you can see pesticide used and yield where they meet it's 17% it is positively related it means when you use particular pesticide it affect on yield directly okay uh, yeah it goes like this okay 17% is a not small number when you think of it in hectares or tons or quintals it have, it means a lot 17% means a lot so i am plotting that uh, whatever the matrix we saw that i am plotting here to check it just take pesticides from x axis and yield from y axis uh, there will be getting this chocolate color here uh, so this color will match here 0.2 near to 0.2 that is 0.17 what we saw about the same thing but graphically we are showing okay so once we get that we understand it is positively affecting my yield what pesticides we use that matters a lot now as i mentioned initially the uh, columns which contains strings objects are like this season crop they are containing objects so we need to convert them into some numbers for that what i am using i am using option called get them is get them is what it will do is for example if i ask uh, pd get them is state okay it will convert all this state column values into Uh, state column values into new column and it will uh, we will remove that you can see here uh, year once i do this district uh, bagal coat will become a new column here somewhere you can see sunflower sugarcane crop become a new column because i am saying this this column should become a numerical or get dummy sheet should do new column wherever that sugarcane is used it will become one otherwise that entire uh, thing will be zero like that and after that we will we will remove those things we will remove these things here it will they will be there okay new columns will be added but this new old columns will be there i will uh, try to remove those old columns here so here i am dropping them remove nothing but i am dropping it from my data frame so once i drop you can see all my data is entirely bagal coat no it was a uh, part of a state column a district column now it become a new column where it uh, matches with bagal coat it will become one otherwise it will become a zero so my now my entire data set is numerical so now i am going to use min max scalar okay my area is very uh, uh, ranging it from a small number to very high number so to minimize the loss i am going to use min max scaling it is just like a normalizing okay uh, this uh, about this i made an one, uh, one video in my uh, youtube channel you can say that 
what is this minimum scaling or uh, uh, normalizing so then my entire data set is available so from this i just uh, yeah these things i left uh, before actually uh, pesticides and uh, get them i didn't do for these things i done it now these two columns and then you can see next my uh, main purpose is if there are any nulls actually we have some nulls 43 empty values are there in our uh, yield column so i am going to fill them with some mean values of that particular column so once i done that i am going to split my data into train and test and for sincerely i will select what is my target output or like y x and y what we say r a b you can mention okay my uh, target is yield column my inputs are other than yield column everything is my input that is uh, from data frame i am going to just drop yield and uh, that will be a, a nothing but a you will be having all the columns except yield that will become my input uh, so that's what i i call feature okay so the, all the features are nothing but the a dot column the like column of a input are my uh, feature list so uh, here i am going to split my uh, data into train and test uh, that i have split uh, into 30 and 70 70 percent will be for training 30 percent will be for testing random state we will use to shuffle the data before splitting okay once we have the data split it, i am going to build models here first i am going to uh, uh, standardizing or rescaling the data once i done that first i am going to use my model random forest okay once I train my random forest, my auto score is 76 percent. Auto score says what is the percent of accuracy? It's uh, almost equal to accuracy. Okay, that I am using. Uh, so for random forest, it is giving 76 percent. Okay, and after that, uh, cross validation I am doing. Then also, uh, okay, and uh, I am just displaying the predicted values here. Some predicted values and after that i am going with svm that is svr uh, when you see svr is giving 83 percent of accuracy and then i am going with xz boost so xz boost is giving around 94 percent of accuracy here you can see that and then i am going with a uh, linear regression linear regression is giving 24 percent accuracy so among them where we are getting better results xcboost is giving 94 percent of accuracy so you can uh, you can tune this okay you can change the hyper parameters there are so many options okay? you can tune but anyway in the end you will be getting good accuracy for xcboost itself so now you can take this model you can save this as an pickle file you can create an, a user interface where you integrate this and you, there you can uh, feed the input which type of pesticides they are planning to use and all those stuff and you can predict the yield if you use this this type of pesticide here the data set can be uh, made somewhat like more uh, general like you can add some other parameters also uh, about pesticides there you will get good results this was all about today thank you very much for watching and happy new year to everyone be happy and all your wishes and your ideas, all your plans will come true. Thank you, thank you very much.